Hello, everyone, and welcome to the SDGs and Dissemination webinar, the last webinar in the Making Census 2020 Count with GIS webinar series. My name is Richard Dubara. I'm a marketing specialist here at Esri, and I will be your moderator today. This webinar is being recorded. We'll send you out an email afterwards to point you towards the recording if you'd like to view it again or share it with your colleagues. There will be a Q&A section at the end of the webinar. You can type your questions into the questions window, and we'll address them at the appropriate time. There will also be poll questions to give you the opportunity to interactively respond to questions and see the collected results. Note, individual results will not be published, just a percent response to each poll question. I'll now turn it over to Linda Peter to introduce herself. Linda? Thanks, Richard. This is Linda Peters. I'm a Global Business Development Manager for Statistics here at Esri. I've worked for over 25 years in the mapping industry and focus on the integration of statistical and geospatial information. I work with national statistical offices across the globe, helping them understand how to apply geographic methods and spatial thinking to census and statistical activities. I'm an active member of the UNGGIM, a member of the UNGGIM expert group on the integration of statistical and geospatial information, as well as the big data and national reporting platforms, working groups. And I'm really pleased to be here with you today. Mark, over to you. Hi, this is Mark Seigen, and I'm the Industry Manager for Mapping and Statistics at Esri. I've been working for 34 years in GIS and mapping. I'm actively participating on the UN uh, United Nations Committee of Experts on Global Geospatial Information Management, or UNGGIM, and I'm on the Board of Directors of the International Map Industry Association. Adam, on to you. Hi, this is Adam Pfister, and I'm a solutions engineer on the nonprofit and global organizations team. In addition to supporting nonprofits, I also engage with various UN agencies directly, including their efforts regarding the sustainable development goals. Linda, back to you. Thanks, Adam. Today, we're gonna to talk about SDGs and dissemination. The dissemination of data using GIS. We'll focus on three key areas. First, we'll talk about SDGs and the role of statistics in GIS. Next, we'll take a look at the importance of web GIS and dissemination. And finally, we'll share with you the work we've been doing with the UN and several national statistical offices on the federated information system for the SDGs. Hopefully, all of you are familiar with the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs unanimously adopted by 193 member states of the UN and passed in September of 2015 with 17 goals, 169 targets, and 233 indicators. The SDGs lay out a bold path to end poverty in all of its forms everywhere. As Ban Ki-moon stated, the new agenda is a promise by leaders to all people everywhere. It is a universal, integrated, and transformative vision for a better world. So how do we work to achieve these goals? One of the key lessons coming out of the MDGs is that we need transparency. We need to be able to measure and monitor our progress. This is where GIS and geography come in. The integration of statistical and geospatial data provides us a much richer understanding of our statistical data, those indicators. We can begin with maps to visualize our progress. We can, by using GIS, analyze and compare data. To reach the goals and to have better understanding, we need this integration. We also must be able to share or disseminate this information, making it accessible to citizens, civil society, academia, researchers, and more. We recognize that both statistical and geographic information help form the foundation of our understanding. We can, by joining these together, begin to see patterns and trends in our data. We can disseminate data using common geographies, visualize data while keeping the data secure and maintaining privacy. So why should we do this integration? We're doing it to bring understanding, to help us improve government policies, to improve society, to close the gap between the world we live in and the world we want. This example you see on screen is from the Central Statistics Office in Ireland, bringing together statistical data from CSO, 
with mapping data from Ordnance Survey Ireland to highlight the issue of housing, the shortage of affordable housing in Ireland. We can use GIS to help us understand, measure, and monitor the various goals. One of the examples you see here on the bottom left for goal number one is from the Philippines, visualizing in a map poverty data. On the right, under goal number two, looking at malnutrition in India or access to healthy food in California. Or perhaps it's goal number four for quality education, for example, school performance in Tanzania. Or goal number five, helping us to understand gender ratios in government office in the UK. Or perhaps doing some spatial analytics to understand goal number nine, looking at cellular coverage, for example, in India and understanding where we may have gaps. On the right, under number, goal number 10, on mapping income inequality to help us understand the current situation and allow us to consider policies or programs needed to help us reach this goal to reduce inequalities in our own country. Now, to reach the goals will require a lot of hard work. We must be able to monitor our progress if we are to understand and make adjustments. In order to understand progress, we must follow open data principles, creating the needed transparency, providing access to data, dissemination of information in a timely fashion. We must also, though, be able to integrate data from many varied sources, which we can do in a GIS system. This data will be required. It is the fuel which will help drive our decisions to help us change, to drive progress on policies affecting SDG outcomes. There are many challenges we all face as we do this work. We need in our own country to be able to measure progress at national and subnational levels, while others such as the UN World Health Organization want to understand this at global levels. We need to be able to disaggregate data by gender or age, for example, so that we consider everyone and leave no one behind. As stated previously, we need to be able to use data from many sources. And we need to be able to tie all of this data to geography to make it relevant and understandable, actionable at the local level. We can do this by using WebGIS. I would like now to ask my colleague, Mark Saigan, to give us some background on WebGIS. Mark? Thank you, Linda. Geographic Information Systems, or GIS, and the Science of Wear provide us with a framework for creating and applying geographic knowledge. GIS allows us to manage, map, and analyze our information, enabling us to work in more collaborative ways and inform decision makers to take action. This is leveraging the technologies of web services, enabling web GIS. Web GIS enables individuals, teams, and organizations to work across their enterprise and for communities to interact across the web using web services. This is breaking down silos and barriers inside and outside our organizations and allowing us to share and collaborate across connected communities. WebGIS provides us the ability to utilize many different types of data, including mapping, statistical, real-time IoT data, and so on. You get the idea. By integrating these data through web services, we can visualize and analyze information without having to physically copy or bring this data together. This means authoritative data providers can maintain and control their own data while maximizing the use and value of it with other data. Apps make this system come alive using open data and services. Office and field apps use that data and apply it to real world requirements and challenges to better support decision making. This is connecting data producers, like many of you, to your users in many new ways. These users are able to access your information through the apps that best suit their needs. 
For example, field workers use apps to increase their access to relevant information in the field, making them more effective. Statisticians can use apps for their analysis. And executives can use dashboards to better inform their decisions. WebGIS is enabling people to connect with information anywhere, when and how they want it. It provides organizations the ability to easily share information across their enterprise and outside to other organizations. It empowers communities to collaborate, creating new opportunities to solve real world issues. WebGIS enables us to distribute and interconnect our knowledge and engage everyone. This technology is driving major aspects of digital transformation in many organizations. It empowers you to disseminate your census and statistical data, making it easier for many types of users to access and understand your information and apply it to the challenges they're working on. Now my colleague Adam is going to demonstrate WebGIS and the dissemination of data. Adam? Thanks, Mark. Let's take a look at a couple of examples of dissemination using GIS. The following story map showcases the modernization efforts of a few national statistical organizations with a focus on dissemination of data. The first example is from Cape Verde, a small island nation off the west coast of Africa. The Instituto Nacional de Estatistica, the INE of Cape Verde, chose to use ArcGIS Online to disseminate their data rapidly and securely to its citizens. Let's take a look at their ArcGIS Online site. Here we are looking at a few examples of information products that the INE has produced, such as demographic characteristics and habitat conditions. Let's view a story map. This story map focuses on employment in Cape Verde. This, it's using the series template with tabs at the top to show different views of unemployment data. For example, this tab is showing unemployment disaggregated by male and female. By using GIS to modernize their workflows, it took INE Cape Verde an estimated 40% less time to produce maps from census data in 2010 than it did a decade earlier. The second example we'll look at Instat Albania. Instat leverages an enterprise geodatabase for all of its work, including dissemination. This is the live web application from Instat. Running on ArcGIS Enterprise, it is a traditional mapping application, allowing the user to interact with the data. We can change the level of detail to local units, then selecting our indicator group, population, and finally the indicator itself, average household size. Now we see data at the local level. We can change our classification method, our number of breaks, and even the color ramp. We can also interrogate the map by selecting an individual area of interest in order to understand data by local area units. This type of application is made simple by using GIS throughout the statistical process. There are many other examples, including the US Census Bureau, showing how to bring population and economic data together in one application or Rwanda sharing their data via GeoPortal, and many, many more. And now back to Mark. Thanks, Adam. Now we're gonna transition and give you our audience an opportunity to answer a poll question. Please tick the boxes that apply to your organization and you can pick more than one. 
how is your organization currently using GIS in the dissemination of your statistical data? And you can pick the boxes that apply there. It may be creating a printed atlas. It may be creating an online atlas. Uh, publishing web maps and apps. It may be that you're publishing your information through through mobile apps. And if you're not sure, uh, that's fine, uh, or it's not applicable. And we're getting in quite a few uh, responses here, so um, we'll keep it open for another couple seconds. Looks like about not quite two thirds of you have voted. So if you, uh, we'll give you another second to put your your um, responses in there. All right, and we're going to go ahead and close it out. About three quarters of you, actually almost 80% of you have responded now. And what we're seeing is that um, over two thirds of you are publishing your information uh, through web maps and apps. And, and that's, that's great. About a third of you are, are doing, uh, creating printed atlases from, this, uh, from your information. And about a third of you are creating online atlases. So that's an interesting result there. So uh, thank you, and about 10% of you are using mobile apps, so that's great. Um, thanks for your input on that. It's good to, uh, to see those results. And uh, I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Linda. Great, thank you, Mark. As you can see, GIS, which typically was thought of as a system of record, provides a platform for dissemination. But today it also provides you a system of engagement and insight, allowing you to share, collaborate, and better understand your data. GIS systems are becoming distributed. A new architecture is emerging, enabling collaboration. This dynamic system of systems allows your data to stay secure in your infrastructure, on premise at your agency, making sure your authoritative data stays secure. However, you can share access to your data, maintain the original data, and have full control to manage access, permissions, and security levels. This system is breaking down barriers, connecting us, not only inside of our own organization, but across other organizations, allowing us to create this network, connecting individuals, organizations, and communities, creating a nervous system for the planet and a means to measure and monitor our progress. We see this in action in many places already. The city of Los Angeles is one of these. WebGIS has enabled community engagement there, connecting over 40 departments, running on an array of disconnected technology platforms. There are more than 500 data sets, and growing every day, in a centralized business intelligence system. More than 200 Los Angeles-based startups are using this system, which is generating more than $3 billion in yearly capital for there's almost 4 million people in the greater Los Angeles area who have access to this information to help them understand their city and local issues such as poverty, education, and healthcare. By using a GIS platform and this framework, it brings together all the data. It integrates the data. It brings it into an abstraction that people can understand, a map a map that can be easily visualized and inform decisions. It's a framework that allows you to analyze the relationship between phenomena and model them and create understanding. It's a framework within which we can design and plan for the future. You all are participating in this effort with your work and it's a collective effort to create a smarter world, a sustainable world. And GIS provides the means for creating this federated system for the SDGs. So what do we mean by this? That's a, it's a big word. I wanna talk a little bit now about the work we've begun with the UN and some member states. The UN Statistical Division has stood up an SDG hub using ArcGIS. 
countries' national statistical offices are also using GIS, GIS to stand up their own hubs or portals to strengthen their own monitoring and reporting on the SDGs. This system allows for reporting directly to the UN Statistical Division at the national level, but it also allows the NSOs to report at sub-national levels within their country. This is built on a service-based, interoperable, standards-driven, system of systems approach. This federated information system empowers countries to use and make visible their own data. It allows for the integration of data, it provides collaboration, and allows us to apply information products and tools to policy decisions. The story map you see on the screen here is just one example from the UN of data-driven progress. We know that WebGIS enables SDGs, but what do we want to achieve with this? We need to make sure monitoring happens at the national level with country ownership. We want to empower countries to use and make visible their own data. Enable the implementation of open data principles and the integration of new sources of data. We want to make national data visible at the global level and strengthen coordination and accountability to ensure the independent capacity is established to measure organizations' performance on the SDGs. The example you see here is from CSO Ireland, which we'll look at in just a couple of minutes. My colleague Adam is going to demonstrate some of the examples of what I've been describing. Adam? Thanks, Linda. I now want to share with you some examples of open SDG data hubs that member states have implemented. Here we can see how Palestine has laid out their site using the standard colors and icons to allow for easy and intuitive access to data. Clicking on an SDG tile gives you direct entrance to the data sets that are relevant. In this case, items related to poverty. When you click on an individual data set, you are directed to that item's overview page. On this page is an interactive map which shows you basic visualization of features and any of the attributes below. By clicking on one of these attributes, you're able to quickly visualize that attribute on the map. Exploring the data set in a table view also allows you to sort and filter the information. Let's look at another example. Here is a data set from Mexico. There has been 25 years of data published for one indicator. This data set can be accessed via open APIs in GeoService and GeoJSON format. Additionally, there are links that provide you the option to create a web map and a story map directly from an individual data set. So 25 years of data is great to have at your fingertips but it is perhaps presented best in a story map. By clicking on the Create Story Map link, I am launched directly into the Story Map Builder experience. In this case, I'm using a map series story map template. The first tab at the top is already populated with the data set I was just reviewing. From here, I can continue to refine my text, add additional sections, that can include images, video, or embedded websites. All this content helps me tell the story of how this particular data set may have changed over the past 25 years. Senegal is our next example. Using the localization capabilities of ArcGIS Online, they have published their site using their local language. Search results within the Senegal site return not only feature layers, but also published web maps. Published web maps give you, give you the ability to view the data and get a clear picture of what it is and what it represents. If I view the metadata of the web map itself, I can see even more details and even choose to open it in the ArcGIS Online map viewer. The ArcGIS Online Map Viewer is a powerful tool for data exploration and analysis. 
you also have the ability to add content from a variety of sources. Here, we chose the Living Atlas. The Living Atlas is a vast collection of geographic information from around the world. I can search by keywords or filter by categories or even choose to limit the results to only those that fall within the current view of the map. With this data set, perhaps I want to view some imagery. The Living Atlas offers a layer titled World Imagery Clarity. I can get there quickly by simply typing clarity, see the results, and get a description of the layer. So in addition to the baseline world imagery layer that provides maybe the most recent high quality imagery available, this additional clarity layer will present imagery with a focus on providing the clearest and or most accurate view available. Zooming in on the map, I can begin to explore the, the layers on the, on the map. I can see the clear imagery. I can also adjust the transparency of my data set to see the imagery underneath. This experience of open SDG data hubs can be configured by any nation. The Philippine Statistics Authority has configured their SDG data hub homepage to group data by categories, in addition to sustainable development goals. This is a great approach which shows the user some of the national priorities for a nation. I can click on population and social conditions to view data on poverty. I can also get to that same data on poverty by going through the sustainable development goals. Ordnance Survey Ireland has built an open data site organized, organized by census themes. And this is done for census 2016. Now they've also created an open data site for the SDGs using a similar experience. This site offers the same experience as the other hubs we've looked at. And it's important to note that both the census 2016 Ireland site and the SDG data hub are using the same data infrastructure and services. Here, I would like to highlight the story maps on the homepage. This one focuses on the changing patterns of unemployment. As we move through the story, we can see the first section is looking at the unemployment rate at a regional level of geography. The next section dives a little bit deeper and we can even visualize this data at a finer level of detail. In this case, the electoral division located in a lot of different areas. We can interrogate the map to find out more information about the data and perhaps how it might be impacting this local community. Story maps are incredibly effective tools that bring together multimedia and maps to engage and inspire your audience ultimately driving them to take some kind of action. By now, you should be noticing similarities in how these sites are laid out, the SDG icons and colors, and so on. From this initial work with the member states, we are working on templates to help onboard users quickly with these styles, while at the same time allowing them to apply their own branding. These templates will be available on GitHub shortly. We've just gone through several individual member state SDG hubs. I would like to close by showing you how the United Nations Statistical Division plans on bringing them all together. Under the banner of SDG.org, the United Nations has implemented the Open SDG Data Hub, a collection of data, apps, and stories. The Open SDG Data Hub is live today. Along with member states, the UN is now creating story maps to disseminate to anyone who wants to understand the progress of the goals. Here is the Sustainable Development Goals report for 2018. In different tabs, a detailed report is provided for each goal.
important and common themes are present in your daily work. The UN has put together this story map to help you better understand these themes. Addresses, transport networks, population distribution, land cover and use, physical infrastructure, water, and more. These are all vital to understand the goals, vital to understand how we can impact change in our day-to-day -day work. So all of this is available at sdg.org right now. The UN is responsible for global reporting of the SDGs and that data can be found here. But all of the previous, previous examples of sites, web maps, story maps, these are not disconnected. These exist in a hub ecosystem, a network of hubs, all reporting on the SDGs. SDG.org is simply the landing page. Global data is here, but it will also bring together data from all the member state hubs. Here, I've simply typed Ireland into the search box, and I can see results from Ireland's SDG data hubs showing up in the search. Through a simple yet powerful group sharing mechanism in ArcGIS Online, member states can share bi-directionally with the UN, and as the data is updated, the latest information is immediately available. As more member states implement this model, critical data sets and insightful, actionable stories that may never before have been seen can be easily discovered and used to drive change at the local levels where it may most be needed. And now I'd like to hand it over to Mark. Thanks, Adam. So we're gonna give you another chance uh, as the audience to uh, take a poll question. This is our last poll question. And um, what we like to ask, many of you are charged with, uh, with SDG reporting. Uh, how have you begun to use GIS in your SDG work? So it may be inventorying existing data for SDGs. Uh, it may be creating web or map services to use in, or in, in, um, in publishing your data. Maybe published maps or information products, or some of you are creating story maps and apps. Or again, if you're not sure, uh, please just uh, go ahead and, and, uh, and indicate that it's not a problem. And we're getting responses back now. Looks like about half of you have responded now. We'll give you a few more seconds to, uh, to make your selections. You can select more than one. And uh, we're gonna give you one more second here and then we're gonna close up. We've got about two thirds of you have voted now. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and, and close that out. And uh, it looks like um, about um, half of you are creating web uh, or map services to publish your data. Um, about uh, a third of you are publishing maps and, uh, and information products, and about a quarter of you have inventoried your, your data for the SDGs. So, um, and actually, one just popped up uh, here at the end. It was uh, about 40% of you are creating st uh, story maps or using apps. So that's great. That's a great response. Um, thanks to all of you for we have um, we've talked about people, processes, and technology uh, that are in place, and this is actually happening now. We, we have the blueprint, we know how to achieve this. This is a federated system, as Linda said, a federated system for the SDGs, and it's working. It's working today in Ireland as, as uh, in other countries, as Adam showed you. It's a system of systems working at a country, provincial, and local level, and with other stakeholders. It's making data available to governments, the civil society, and citizens. You have the data and the tools are available to you as you've seen today. You can use these to quickly set up an initial operating capability. And as you collect more data, you can expand, enhance, and scale it up. It's, an imp it's important to note that this is country owned and country led. All UN countries have committed to supporting the UN SDGs. And this is a proven way for you to do the required monitoring and reporting of the progress. Today we've seen how the ArcGIS platform supports the three goals we set out in the beginning of this webinar. The monitoring of SDGs at the national level with country ownership, 
the implementation of open data principles and the integration of new sources of, of data. And finally, that data-driven decisions can contribute to a positive change. We see GIS and statistics providing the authoritative information to inform decision makers as they work to create a more sustainable world. ESRI is committed to supporting this uh, development of the authoritative statistical data with GIS. This includes methodology and a new book to be published later this year by Esri Press on GIS and the 2020 census. This book speaks to the methods and best practices today for applying GIS to your work. There's also hands-on learning with exercises on learn.arcgis.com to help you with your capacity building and the technology that we've shown you here today. This technology is now available to many eligible organizations in a new official statistics modernization program from ESRI. There are more than 75 qualifying countries. Each eligible country's statistical office will receive four years of perpetual licenses of ArcGIS technology. You can contact us on the survey at the end of this webinar to get more information. Before we move to our question and answer time, I'd like to let you know about previous webinars in our webinar series, Making Census 2020 Count with GIS. You can view these previous webinars by going to the web, uh, by going to the link that you see at the bottom of your page. Uh, we've got another question. Uh, are there any templates or things that can help me to get started in my SDG work? Um, yes, there are. Um, Adam, can I ask you to expand on this one? Absolutely. So I, I referenced some of the templates in, in showing some of the member state sites. We've recognized that they've been pretty popular as far as layout and design. So we're actually going to provide a, a starting template similar to what you saw with all of my examples for Ireland, for Philippines, and, and so on, that you can use to essentially copy that into your own site and then begin replacing it with your own content, your images, your branding, your mission statement, etc. Mark? All right, thanks, Adam. We've got another question here from Roger. Uh, it's, it says, I see the um, uh, I see the collecting of data with the nth degree inferring with individuals private interfering with people's privacy, depending on how narrow a resolution WebGIS is striving to achieve. How do you see this striving for greater data affecting individuals' levels of privacy? That, that's a great timely question, Roger. I'm going to let Linda take uh, take this one. Yeah, thanks, Mark. It is a great question. Privacy is a concern to everyone. It seems these days we're always hearing about something. Um, though the organization may collect data at low levels of geography, uh, for example, census blocks or even point level data, that data can be disseminated based on the rules that the NSO chooses. In other words, even though you've collected data at very small areas, you may want to aggregate that data and distribute it only at, say, national, regional, provincial, city level, right? So it's, it's up to the decision of the agency as to how they choose to disseminate. So they can keep that data secure and um, maintain, uh, you know, the rules of privacy that we all so desire. Mark? All right, thank you, Linda. Uh, let's see, we've got an, a question from, uh, from Ahmed. Um, I have an interest on the UN uh, Data Hub of SDGs. Does the UN Data Hub cover all SDG, all SDG data in most countries of the world, and how do you access that data? Linda, I'll give that to you again. Yeah, great. Um, so Ahmad, the UN SDG Data Hub is open to all. You can view, access, and interact with the data, even download it, uh, you know, access it via an API if you're so bold, or uh, create web maps. Um, all of that is set, found simply at sdg.org. Um, it doesn't yet cover every goal everywhere, of course, because the data is not available yet, right? We've all begun to work very hard at this, but, but we recognize there are data gaps, and, and they're different from country to country. But the framework is in place to support this. And as uh, nations create, publish, and share that data, the UN SDG hub will be even more complete. So it's really critical 
um, for the countries and nations to begin to, to fill those data gaps and to share that data. But simply go to sdg.org and you can begin to participate today. Okay, great. Thank you, Linda. Um, we've got a second question from, from Ahmed. It's uh, right now my team, are, my team is working on making story maps. Um, are there any tips or tricks to choose uh, the best suitable template and to build story maps? And is there any reference that gives me best practice to build story maps? Um, Adam, I'll give that to you. Yeah, great. Um, there is uh, a, lot, a wealth of resources for you to, to view and to begin learning about story maps. So if you just go to storymaps.arcgis.com, and perhaps we can put that on the screen or put that in the, in the chat, that will direct you to the, the home page, maybe your centralized spot for learning about story maps. From there, you can learn and view a story map of the month, something that our team has highlighted as a very good example of creating a story map and an impactful story maps. You can also view information about um, specifically how to make a story map. So it'll walk you through step by step um, how you want to create a story map, also how to choose the correct template. Uh, we've got six or seven, maybe more different templates to, to help you tell your story the best. And then there are blog posts, there are even story maps that teach you how to make story maps, right? So we recognize it's an effective tool, so we use it to, to try to teach you how to create story maps. So we'll get that out there and, and we'll make sure you have those resources.